call the meeting of the library board to, to order uh, on uh, July 16th, 2019. Uh, will you please join me in the Pledge of Allegiance? <clears throat> I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. All right. Uh, roll call, please. Aaron Robertson. Here. Gail Conkle. Here. Jordan Young. Here. Alderman Wolf. Here. Tony Hynelski. Not yet. Camille is excused. Barb. Here. Uh, Tracy Blair is excused. And Michelle is here. Okay. All right. Thank you. Statement of public notice. The meeting has been noticed in a Excuse me, in accordance with the um, Wisconsin Public Meeting Law. Thank you. Uh, mm -hmm. Consent agenda looks like two items on that uh, consent this evening. Uh, first one being approval of minutes from the June 18th, 2019 meeting and to place on file the library financial reports uh, for the month of June 2019. Uh, so at this time, I will entertain a motion uh, for approval of the consent agenda, please. Make a motion to approve the consent agenda as noted. Gail, well, thank you. Is there a second on that? I'll, I'll second. second. Go ahead. I'll second. All right. All right. Thank you. Uh, any further discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? Any abstentions? <laughs> no. Okay. All right. All right. Uh, that passed unanimously. Thank you. President's report, no no formal report this evening. So we'll move into the director's report. Alka. Okay. Um I wanted to talk to you a little bit about the um whatever sheet this is, the monthly statistics sheet. Comes after the director's report. One of the things that we've struggled with um, for years is the fact that as times have changed and everybody's Googling everything, we don't get nearly as many reference questions. You know, what was the stock worth when I bought it? Um, you know, lots of in-depth reference questions that require some research on our part or some expertise on our part. And those are the only kinds of reference questions that we can report in the annual report to the DPI. They don't care or count uh, computer questions, uh, copier questions, um, you know, obviously not telling people where the bathrooms are or things like that. They also don't count any patron interactions um, for programs or for summer reading, for instance. And so we decided a few months ago to start tracking on two lanes, basically. We have a silver clicker out at reference on which we still click for every reference transaction we do that requires specialized training experience, et cetera, where we uh, consult some kind of database, be it our catalog or be it some other kind of database, that kind of thing. And then we have a green clicker on which we click away for all of the other things that DPW doesn't count. And if you look at the, whoops, I got it upside down. If you look at the reference transactions for June, in 2018, the DPI defined reference questions. We answered 1,196. In 2019, it was up a little bit, 1,211. Now you can see in the next um, line here, technical other information transactions, um, that we started in February to click on, you know, co uh, collect the other types of uh, patron interactions that we have. Take a look at how many people we talk to this month at the reference desk. It doesn't mean that we're less busy. We just don't do as much traditional reference and a lot of other types of interactions. We talk to 3,152 kids and families over the month of June. So we've been extremely 
busy out there. The percentages that are listed underneath that are confusing at this point because we don't have a comparison to 2018, so they won't look quite as out of whack as they do right now. What Michelle and Brittany decided here, if, if you're interested, is they Michelle adds the two 2019 numbers, so the 1,211 from the regular reference transactions and the 3,152 other transactions, and then figures out what the percentage difference is over the 1,196 from 2018. Okay, so that just, it tells you that we've been super busy, but it won't really give you a good ratio until we have a second year, we start the second year of doing this. So just a little background well, I, or a little I, I, insight into it. surprising, though, that you would have 3,000 questions and checkouts are down 5,000 and library visits is down 2,000. Yeah, the reason, the reason for that is the checkouts and the library visits is that last year in June, we opened the new children's library, children's wing. But I'm, so, just saying, I'm just looking at the technical questions. Or, yeah. I mean, you're up, you're up 2,500 compared to the average of four, four months, but then your visits and, and so on are, are down that much. It, it, it's, I'm just thinking you guys... But it, in this article that I read in the paper here, it's simply because you can't correlate checkouts to attendance. Right. Because if people are coming to programs, they might not be going in to check something But I'm, I'm just surprised that mm -hmm. 3,000 yeah. 3, questions, I, I, considering you've been averaging 500 and, and you went up 2,500. In that regard, yes. Yeah. I mean, that's so, a yeah. so if you look at the whole thing, it, it seems like something is out of whack. Yeah. The, the reason for that astronomical number is that the kids come in, sign up for summer reading, and then they come back every week, and we interact with them. We stamp their little booklet. They get a coupon. If a family comes in with three kids, you have four interactions right there if mom sure. is also participating in the summer reading program. Okay, so we have to interact with each person. Well, I was just each thinking person. maybe you just started doing this, and now you're actually starting to really track it now. No, we started, it's a summer reading program that leads to this massive activity. It's often, the first couple of weeks, there were often two or three of us out there at the reference desk just to handle the mob of kids. Does this include phone calls? Yes. Yeah. Most of the phone calls, though, end up being reference questions. You know, place a book on hold for me, or what's the phone number for whatever where we have to go online and find the phone number that kind of thing but just the, the only reason why i pointed it out is we're really busy during yeah. the summer mm -hmm. yeah. well even if you look at the 1200 number just in reference transactions alone you're not open on sunday mm -hmm. so that gives you 25 days and you take that number and you divide it by 25 you're looking at 40 or 50 depending on a circumstance mm -hmm. a day of what i'll call true Mm -hmm. reference transactions. I mean, that's that's still quite a few every day, and I it would is. assume that more of it is probably on a Saturday. No. No, it's not. Mm -mm. Mondays Saturday. and Tuesdays are the busiest mm -hmm. days by okay. far. Okay. Wow. Oh, really? Yeah. Is that right? Wow. Yeah. Wow. So, I mean, that's still quite a bit. Even the 1,200, if you figure out mm -hmm. the day, I mean, that's still quite a bit. Yeah. So, but that, so, I think, is it fair to assume, based on uh, questions, that this is going to be the same pretty much July, August, July, yes, August, it'll start tapering it'll start off. Taper because off. This, and then we'll go back to the, yeah. what I'll call the more normal number. Right, that's around 500-ish. Yeah. yeah, so, yeah, because if not, then something is amiss to mm -hmm. your counting. So I guess that's... Yeah. No, no, this is just so high because of the summer reading program. Okay. Okay. Right. From my report on the director's report page... Um, my, the last sentence here, the Bridges database costs have not been finalized yet, so a report on this matter will be presented at the August meeting. We actually got, we had a director's meeting last Friday, and by yesterday I had, we had the final numbers, but by then this packet was already out. The database costs, um, for a number of reasons, are slightly lower for 2020 than they were this year because there's some different pots of money that are 
where funds are moving around. So there is no increase in, in the database costs. So what you signed off on on the, on the budget uh, draft is still in good standing. Can you define what that is? Because when I think of it, I'm thinking of that's consumer reports. That's, you know, like, is that, like, what are we paying for with the It's consumer process? reports, it's scale courses, mm -hmm. it's Flipster, the online magazine uh, access, it's Ancestry, it's, um, what else is in there? Morningstar, Reference USA, which is going away next year. That might be a why couple it's others. the same price then, too. That's part of it. Yeah. Okay. Um, one of the exciting things that came up, came up at, the, at the director's meeting on, on Friday is that the group decided um, to purchase for next year a, an app for the catalog. This is something that came up in the system-wide survey that people would like an app because the current catalog access on your smartphone is rather clunky. And now would that be an overdrive app? No, no, this is a catalog app. So, catalog app. Yeah, okay. for the library catalog. For the full bridges or in Yes. Okay. Yes. Wow, that's going to be a big undertaking. It is. Um, there is one product that we've looked at pretty extensively that has some very exciting features. For instance, in the app you can store, let's say your family, mom, dad, and three kids, you can store all five cards in your app and then check out from your, from your phone. Wow. Okay, so you don't have to have all the cards. You can see everything in one, you can see what your kids have out in one screen. Hmm. Okay, so there are, there are a lot of nice features on that. One of the things that is potentially really impactful too is that this particular app offers us the opportunity to push out notifications for closings or for upcoming programs because a lot of people, I don't know if you notice the board that is across from the boards that are across from the circulation desk right now where we're collecting feedback. One asks for where would you like to see us pop up, schools, parks, etc. The other one, how would you like to be contacted, contacted, contacted. And text is by far the most popular way we all know. That's the easiest place. We don't have to go into our email. It's right there. It pops up. Currently, with the catalog, the way it's configured, there is no way to push out text messages. But if we get the app, yeah, yeah. then we can do that. There's a gas mm -hmm. station or whatever. Mm -hmm. Right. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Overdue notices? Things yep. Like that too, all of that. Yeah. Oh. That already goes out by text. It does. Because okay. that goes from the, yeah. Yeah, that does go out. Um, but it can tell you, too, for instance, your library card will expire in two weeks. Please get it updated. And two weeks later, it'll tell you your library card is now, mm -hmm. you know, no Who's longer active. Who's putting all that data, though? I mean, that's got well, the, the implementation process, uh, the company says, takes nine to ten months. Yeah. Uh, because they have to gather so much information from the catalog software and then also they have to customize or they can customize the screen for each individual library mm -hmm. uh, you know colors slightly different icons possibly if some libraries don't have things that other libraries do and is each library paying their share or is Bridges paying for it or um, how is that going to work this is with this particular company, and I keep bringing that up because we can't just, Bridges can't just go with this company. They're going to have to go to an, an RFP and get three different bids. But the Kapira app um, costs $30,000 to implement. And for the first year, Bridges will pay for that. So there is no additional cost to the libraries until the second year. And then they'll, like they do with a lot of these databases, a lot of databases and a lot of offerings, 
first year they pay 100%, the next year they pay 75, and we pay 25, and so it's an incremental burden on us. And so if the library can't afford it, for an example, they just don't have an app. Is that what does everybody no, have this, to participate? No, everybody will have to participate in because this. Because of the unit cost? Yes. Okay. Yeah. So would that be 30000 each year? That's no, that's that for the that's for the purchase the and the, the whole setup. I don't remember offhand if there are annual costs then or if once it's set up, it just runs. That I, I'm not sure of offhand. But Brittany will have much more information mm -hmm. for you going so forward. Any other questions about that? Sounds interesting. Mm -hmm. um, from Abby's report, I just wanted to point out a couple things. I talked to you a little bit about jamming on Janesville and how successful that was last year. Just as a small indicator, last year she took 196 early registrations on that evening from 5 to 8, this year, it was 334 wow. early oh, applications. I get that done in three yeah, hours. Wow. That's a lot of sign-ups for two people to do in three hours. Mm -hmm. You need the app to sign up on that. <laughs> there yeah, you go. there you go. Mm -hmm. There you go. And um, wow. as of today, we have 1,300 kids signed up, which is over 100 ahead of where we were at the end of last summer. <coughs> so we continue to grow. That's why I was so busy at reference. Um, she, a couple weeks ago, she had her annual intergalactic tea party, basically a Star Wars party. Um, the Wisconsin 501st Garrison Troopers came to that. I don't know if you're familiar with them. These are people who are a bit like Trekkies except for Star Wars. They dress up and they have these really elaborate costumes that have to be approved by Lucas Film, Lucas Productions, whatever it is, that every detail is just so. Some of those costumes cost a couple thousand dollars. Wow. So this year we had, we've, we've had, first year I think, this is the third year, first year I think we had four or five people, people come last year. They had so much fun that last year we had about ten this year, I think we had 18 characters. Wow. Mm -hmm. One was a Wookiee. Mm -hmm. oh. Boy, was that Wookiee impressive. On he was stilts. on stilts. Like wow. He was Jeez. awesome. Yeah. Yeah. Very cool. Oh, you were there. Oh, we were, okay. How did this Wookiee yeah. navigate the library? Then it was more than 10 feet. Well, I guess our, Maybe in, the, in the main tall. area, yeah. it was, it was our, really our tall. tall enough. Yeah, I guess so. Yeah. He had an easier time than some of the stormtroopers because they literally just see through these little slits. They can't see what's left or right. They can't see what's below huh. them. Like little kids are a tripping hazard. Huh. So it, it's an interesting experience. And she also had the Star Lab. Michelle, did you go into that? We didn't make it. Okay. In the back, in the open space back here, they set up this huge inflatable planetarium. Um, that there was a, a guy who runs this, and he would take a group of kids, up to 40 kids, in for a 45-minute to an hour presentation. Pitch dark in there until he starts turning on his stars, uh, and you have to had to crawl in th on all fours through this little tunnel. So that was really successful. We did three sessions of that. Kids in there for 45 minutes, huh? That's pretty yeah. Good. Well, mm -hmm. mostly school age or yeah. you know, little older Still, yeah. kids. Yeah. yeah, they all had a wonderful time. Is it? This isn't the same night of as of Jam and Jane's. Well, this is no, okay. no. Mm -mm. She does two huge summer programs on Saturday on Saturdays during the summer. One is the Intergalactic Tea Party, and the other one is coming up in two weeks is the Harry Potter birthday party. So those are always, I think there were like 500 people here for this intergalactic tea party. Oh. So, and tea, is tea actually served? or is Well, it she serves, Michelle, help me. It was... Yoda juice. Yeah. Oh. Oh. Sparkling wine. Uh -huh. juice. Oh. Yoda juice. That's fine. And Luca, is well, Luke Skywalker. Sparkling wine? No. No wonder why there's so many kids. <laughs> 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 
There was something. No, no, they made them, but Slice Bakery is no longer around. So I saw that. Right, I know that. What what bakery? Slice the cross history here, and they made Millennium Falcon laugh for last year's cake and. Mm. So they totally closed up then? Yeah. Because they moved from Waterford over here. Yeah, they, and yeah. the reason, I guess, was some family issue. I don't think it was a poor business circumstance. Like they they business. Just, I don't know. Yeah. They just yeah. closed down because there was some family issue. At least that's mm. what I read. Okay. Anyway, so. oh. <clears throat> I'm curious, and I don't know yep. if anybody knows the answer to this, but do we know how many kids we actually have in Muskego? To know, like, and I realize some of these come from, let's say, the schools where they, like, St. Paul's might live outside the district, so it's not a fair comparison. But I was just wondering how many. Yeah, I don't know. Really I mean, there's 25,000 people. Yeah. So, so any, any idea? I would probably say at least a, a quarter of it, right? I would think so. If not more. Yeah, so that would be about, let's say, 6,000, give or take. So mm -hmm. so we're almost at 25% of all the kids then. I mean, if you, with just rough 1,300 so far. So. Mm -hmm. And that's the, that's the younger kids. Then right. we have a Oh, that's, that's just the younger ones. Down. That's true. So mm -hmm. you'd have to change your, your number accordingly. So mm -hmm. it could be closer to half, maybe. Then, eh? No, because the teen, there are not that many teens that sign up. I mean, it's still... We have a good, healthy no, team. I'm talking about the younger kids. That if you cut that oh, number, yeah. Yeah, yeah, how many True. younger kids? Then you'd be closer yeah. to probably fifty percent. Yeah. How do we get the other fifty percent? Can we handle them? <laughs> That's uh, the next question. Uh, we're pretty much at capacity. I bet. Serve more juice. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. good Yoda juice. Loader juice. <laughs> um, uh. For the adult, young adult program. Um, Amanda ran a Nerf Wars program after closing a couple Friday nights ago. She had 26 kids for that. 25 boys, one girl. <laughs> <laughs> they shot off in about two hours 1,200 darts. Yeah. I don't know how many times. And they were all, they were all like a little girl, right? And apparently 86 are still un unaccounted for, so we <laughs> finding them. And whose darts are those? Then we purchased those. Oh, we, so yeah. we own those. Yeah. We uh, borrow. thanks to Brittany's intervention, we borrowed all of the Nerf guns from Carroll College. Mm -hmm. oh. um, <coughs> and some of the kids brought their own. Hmm. But we have a whole huge Tupperware, not Tupperware, Rubbermaid bin full of Nerf guns. And we bought the, the darts. So that was a lot of fun. Any questions? Can we do an adult version? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I definitely can. Yeah? yeah? Okay. Point taken. Amanda keeps telling me you should do this for adults. <laughs> I'm like, eh. Okay. <laughs> I've already two participants here. <laughs> yeah. so. You don't want to shoot the kids, do you? Huh. Oh, well, kids no. against adults? <laughs> no. Yeah, other adults. Yeah. Yeah, we can invite, invite people. Oh, no. we'll, yeah. It'll be fun. Um, you may or may not know that we have, in conjunction with Abby's fabulous setup for the Harry Potter birthday party, we are trying this year a Harry Potter team trivia night for adults. It's the night before, on the Friday night before the kids' party. So same decorations. And the idea here is to get adults to sign up to participate in this trivia contest. This has been very successful at other libraries. It is on the 26th of, February, uh, 26th of July. We so far have one team of six people signed oh. up. We oh. have space for 72. So if you know any Harry Potter fans, send them our way within the next week and a half. They have to sign up by the 24th. And we figure we have to have at least three teams oh. of six to be able to make this fly. This is intended as a fundraiser for the friends. We're running it. They would reap the financial oh, benefit because it's twenty dollars a head yeah. to participate. Dumb question, perhaps, but do you ever have a list of like who's participating in the birthday party? Because then might the parents also be? Well, we certainly promoted it to the same audience. Yeah, no, we so don't have a list. No, People don't otherwise, sign up. I mean, you could maybe try and contact. Yeah. So they yeah. have to know something. Friday night in July. Well, I'm just thinking you said that's what I was thinking is success in other libraries, but when was it? 
done. You know, I don't know. Franklin had, I think they had 80 people come to theirs, but I can't remember when that was. For us, that Friday night was ideal because Abby does these elaborate decorations, so it would be all set up for... Oh, yeah. 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 Oh, I get it. I just... Yeah. I, just yeah. I, don't yeah. Want you're gonna, I think that's... Because you problem. tap into <laughs> other libraries, or you just want the people who belong to this library? Or? No, we sent it out to most of the libraries in our system. so close, you might get we some sent of the people. It, we sent the information to Franklin. What we're finding more hmm. and more is that people sign up at the last minute for mm-hmm. Amanda's Nerf Wars. That was on a Friday night. Monday, I think we had six kids signed up. Mm-hmm. By Thursday or Friday afternoon, we had 26 kids well, signed you know, up. You get a couple of people to tell their friends and, that they signed up, and all of a sudden they're signing up. You know, mm-hmm. for kids, that works that, easier, that's, right? yeah. that's always safe to assume people will sign up at the last minute mm-hmm. for yeah. just about everything. Well, and I think especially summer. I mean, summer is always so busy. I mean, you don't know if yeah. you get something going on that weekend, you know, even a week or so before. And, and it's, mm-hmm. a, it's a bummer when people do that because you're you're sitting there at the edge of your seat wondering if the event's mm-hmm. going to go on. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You Could know, you and do then, the three teams of two? I'm sure it wouldn't be as fun. No. But you don't want because I would hate to see you cancel it. That's what. We'll have to see. We're hoping that we yeah. get some more people to sign up. So spread the word if you know any, oh, I don't know any, any people. Hmm. Uh, well, that is all I have, unless you have any other questions. Any other questions, concerns? All right. Thank you, Alta. You're welcome. Uh, let's see. Moving along on the agenda, uh, looks like we have no unfinished business this evening. Uh, no new business mm-hmm. either. Uh, communications and miscellaneous business as authorized by law. I, I don't have anything, Alka, anything under that nope. category for you? No. All right. Well, at this time, I guess I will entertain a motion for adjournment. It is exactly 5.30 p.m. <laughs> uh, who would like to make that motion? I just don't move. Barb, thank you. Is there a second? A second. All right. Thank you. Uh, any further discussion? All those in favor of adjourning, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? Any attention? All right. 5.30 p.m.? Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.